Hey everybody, Barry here again. I got some more welding to do. Let's get that finished up and talk about what direction I'm gonna go in with all this again. Got this thing done yesterday. And I was talking about how I got this windage tray all chopped to pieces because the way the oil pan tapers down, this is pretty much just gonna skim right by the pump, or by the pan, sorry. And you can see that the windage tray tapers up toward this edge and the way that I have it caught allows it to skim by without hitting and I think it'll still be okay. It's got mounting point right here and here so it stops that from vibrating. Mounting point's over here so it won't vibrate there and it's nice and stiff. So if I can find an oil pan, I have no idea where I put it. Oh, there it is. All right, let's weld her up. So I took a couple minute break and went got a coffee and energy drink so I can stay alive for the rest of the day. And also went home and picked up the intercooler, which looks a little bit rough at the moment. I'm not sure if the rad is going to fit in between these fouts here or not. If it does, perfect. If not, I'll have to come up with a different plan. But I even thought about if it doesn't, maybe I could cut it off like right here somewhere. Cut it right on across and put it out in the grill or in under the radiator or something like that but i'm kind of hoping it's going to fit not really sure the radiator is pretty narrow in this one so it shouldn't be too bad so we'll check that out in a little bit let's get back to some welding Alrighty then, all welded up, ready for a water test. Do I think it's going to be perfectly sealed the first time? Probably not. Let's fill it up and see what happens. Look at all this nastiness inside of here. Yeah, we don't need that in a well pan. Oh, let's clean this out and see how bad it's going to leak. Should pretty much do a trick. I don't think I see anything leaking yet, but I won't know for a little while. I'll wait for it to dry where I wasted a bunch. Well, it's quite full. I've got it filled up as high as I can, as level as I can. And well, so far, so good. Of course, it's soaking wet where I wasted a bunch on it. 
So I'll know whether this dries or not, if it's leaking or if it isn't. We'll check back in an hour or so and see where we are. While I'm waiting for this thing to leak or not to leak, I'm gonna go ahead and get the garage reorganized a little bit. Get the van put back on the ramp and start sizing up the cradle. Whether I'm going to do two by three stringers up to the front right now, size up the engine mounts. But as soon as I know this doesn't leak, I'm gonna bolt it onto the engine and get the engine sitting where it needs to be. Start making some mounts. Exciting. Well, here's the radiator. I don't know if it's gonna fit, but it would be double sick if it did. Let's see what we got. Man, this whole thing is heavy. Ooh. <laughs> We're so, we got so much room. Sick. Let's turn it around. Okay, here's our intercooler. Dude, that is factory. That's gonna fit perfect. Well, just in case somebody ever does this again, the radiator's off of a power stroke, like a 7.3 F350 or something. So keep that in mind, I guess, for the next Turbo LS crank air back. Man, that's cool. I think we're done. I think that's all it needs to be. No grill, just cut the bumper down around here. Intercooler with Station Road Rat Rods. Spray painted onto it. Cast approved? No. Let's continue. This is the intercooler that originally I had for the Rat Rod and I got off Trevor Waterman, his buddy of mine, helped me out with this one. So that's, uh, that's a deadly, deadly setup. I really appreciate that. God, it's gonna look perfect. Something I'm gonna do really quick before I put the engine back in here is this is a double skin of metal here. And I think I'm gonna take the plasma cutter and just trace all the way around here and pull off this outer skin. That was just a heat shield for the exhaust and we don't need it. And it'll save some extra space that I need. We got this big chunk took out. It was all right, because it's like two and a half inches thick. But it'll save a lot of space. It's been like an hour, so let's check on our oil pan. And from what I can see, I'm very pleased. There's like no water. This is still a little bit damp from where it was wet earlier. I've been keeping an eye on it. But man, it's perfect. And the water level has not gone down a drop. Sweet. And if water's not going through it, oil is not going through it, especially after I get it prime painted and clear coated. So I think we're good to go. Let's bolt it on the engine here and lay this up in place. I figured I'd go ahead and try it and use a quart mixing cup. And this is where six quart sits, right here. So that's not too bad. Six quarts, we got about two inches of pan left. That'll give the room for the crank to kind of slosh around here without getting down into the oil. And I think the windage tray will be just above this, so there shouldn't be any issues. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple bolts in the oil pan in the engine here and lay it in place. Man, this actually looks cool. I like it. I think when I'm done, I might also make a flywheel shield just to come flat against right here so I don't get anything going in there. It doesn't need to be in there like rocks and dust and stuff like that. Dude, that looks sick. I don't know how many times I've put this thing in and taken it back out again. I haven't even filmed every time and it's probably put a dozen on film. So I'll save you the pain and agony of watching me do that again. 
But hey, on the plus side, firewall looks a lot better. Could use a little bit of paint right there, but. So much more room for activities. Got a solid plan. Can't wait to execute it. Okay, okay. Let's put this down. Oil pan looks deadly. Lots of room. Get this to lie out. Because I'm 29, but my knees are like 60. Okay, lots of room between the rack and the power steering lines and the oil pan. I'll probably jack it up a little bit more. This second line over here is actually on the other side of the oil pan, so that's not a big deal. We got a half inch or so between the power steering line here and the oil pan. It's not touching anywhere up on the firewall. Obviously lots of room. And look, our oil pan is actually pretty much above or level with the cradle right here. And the cradle back here is actually lower than the pan. Transmission back here got piles of room. It's like up in the floor, which is to be expected, not a big deal. It's gonna be a hard time getting the shifter to come out in the right place. Looks like it's gonna to wanna to come out through right where this cup holders is. But if I can make a drop bracket, I'll do that. I'm not moving the engine around the van. Now the van is gonna to have to move around the engine. When it gets in there, it ain't moving. Well, let's get some engine mounts made up. But you're gonna have to wait till the next video to see that because this one's starting to get a little bit long and the next one is gonna be a lot of fabrication work. Making up stringers, making up engine mounts, bracing everything up, all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna cut it off here and I'm gonna continue on. <laughs> but that'll be in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a good night.